sound check one two.
Madison for our to the stage to sing our national anthem. Matt. and the seminary trustees to the campus at Sanborn Regional High School and our graduation ceremony, the 128th for Sanborn. My name is Brian Stack, and I'm the principal of Sanborn Regional High School. Tonight, our community honors the academic accomplishments of the class of 2017, a group of young men and women who are about to embark on a new chapter in their lives. They enter a global marketplace that has become increasingly more interconnected and interdependent. Over the last 13 years in Kingston, Newton, and Fremont, our students have learned to effectively communicate, solve problems, contribute to their community, manage their learning, produce quality work, and responsibly use information. These skills will serve them well as they begin to make a difference in our world. And make no mistake, this group is ready to make a huge difference. In their time at Sanborn, our students have become well-rounded individuals. They are scholars. They are musicians, thespians, and athletes. They selflessly give back to our community through service projects. They have won awards, and they have broken records. They are our future, and I couldn't be prouder of their accomplishments. Graduates. Would you please stand if you are a student athlete? <laughs> Sanborn has one of the highest percentages of athletic participation in the state. 
Graduates, please stand if you participated in student council, an honor society, club, or music or drama group. Our extracurricular activities are always a high point for many in our community. And our student council, congratulations on them for winning the National Council of Excellence Award for the second time in a row. Graduates, please stand if you attended our first public kindergarten program at Sandville. It was 13 years ago that our district started its kindergarten. Graduates, please stand if you successfully completed college level classes in high school such as AP, Running Start, Southern New Hampshire University, or Northern Mexico University. <laughs> Graduates, please stand if you successfully completed a two-year certificate program at the Seacoast School of Technology. Graduates, please stand if you completed an internship program while you were at Sanborn. <laughs> Graduates, please stand if you are a New Hampshire scholar. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge some students who have made some amazing commitments to their future. Would the following students please come to the stage to be recognized? When you leave us today, you've made an important and selfless decision to serve our country, and on behalf of our Sanborn community, we want to thank you. Would the following two students please come to the stage? Travis Carlisle and Nick Dayerman. United States Marine Corps. One more round of applause. Now I'd like to announce some special graduation titles. These are based on the final weighted cumulative grade point averages that were calculated at the end of the school year. To the stage, I'd like to welcome Ranked third in our class, our class essayist, Karan Sherman. Our salutatorian, Abigail DeRosier. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our valedictorian, ranked first in the class, Ms. Taylor Zahn. I'd like to invite to the podium. 
podium, guidance counselor Laura Pouliot to introduce our first student speaker of the evening. Actually, she and I are both rather terrified of it. She is speaking today because she exhibits just the right mixture of grace and guts. She constantly seeks out opportunities to put herself out of her comfort zone. High school has been all about exploring personal strengths for Taylor so that her day-to-day -day life, as well as her future, is as rewarding as possible. She's always focused on self-improvement rather than edging somebody else out. Skill building, especially through unexpected passions, such as glamour, makeup, or woodworking, has been Taylor's goal. Taylor certainly stands as proof that hard work and dedication get you somewhere. Her superior grades did not just magically materialize. She has excelled in her coursework across the board, regardless of interest, and sometimes even ability. Today, she's giving her speech as personification of the message that you should all seek opportunities for your own enrichment of mind, body, and soul, actively striving each and every day to maximize life. And while you're pushing your boundaries to the limit to figure out who you are in this world, do it like Taylor Dutzat does it, with an admirable balance of grace and guts. Please come to the stage, Taylor. and class of 2017. It's been long awaited, but we're here at graduation, finally. I'm sure we can all agree that high school has seemed like the longest four years of our lives, but honestly, this day came a lot quicker than I expected. We've had our ups and downs, just like everyone will, but I'd say there's a lot that we can take away from those moments. Just like how, right now, I'm sitting here wondering why I'm even speaking in front of everyone tonight. I'm sure there are a few of you out there wondering that as well, and it's an entirely valid question. I'm fully aware that I'm not exactly the most well-known person in our grade. And I'm certainly not what you call public speaker, as those of you in my seventh grade public speaking class would remember. When I was a freshman just four short years ago, I wouldn't be caught dead speaking up in class, never mind in front of this many people. Actually, come to think of it, I probably wouldn't have spoken here sophomore year either. It's still terrifying for me to be talking in front of everyone right now, yet here I am. But that's just it, isn't it? I'm not the same person who, four years ago, wouldn't speak out in class because I was afraid I would be ridiculed. I don't hold the same insecurities, the fears, or feel as uncomfortable in front of people as I did during the transition into high school. Now, I want everyone to imagine what they were like as freshmen too. Go back and relive all of the emotions you felt on that first day of school. Walking into a building much bigger than the middle school we came from, being surrounded by so many new faces and places to go, getting used to the classes and what was expected of you. It was a lot to take in at the time. You may have been nervous, excited, or maybe you were totally confident, in which case I've gotta say I'm a little jealous. Either way, does everyone have that image in their minds? Good. Now, I want you to snap back to where we are right now, in this moment, and really evaluate how much has changed since then. Some of us have probably accomplished things that we never expected to do as freshmen, like going into internships, performing in plays or talent shows, or even running for a position on a club or council. I mean, all of us here today have achieved one huge thing by being able to graduate and go to college, work, or serve our country. And I congratulate you on that. It's amazing how far you've all come. But regardless of where you're all headed after high school, the transition will not be an easy one. Does everyone remember way back to the Camp Lincoln trip we all went on as freshmen? I don't know about you, but that was absolutely terrifying for me. It's like all of a sudden we were being blessed to Camp Lincoln, dropped off in the common area, and told to go, as we all scrambled to find familiar faces in a sea of strangers. At the end of it all, we ended up tired and covered in dirt, but 
probably a little more comfortable because we knew that everyone around us was going through the same exact thing. Just like going on that trip at the start of high school, the start of college or a career will hold an entirely new set of people, surroundings, and expectations that will be disorienting at first. There will be those of you that are nervous, excited, or confident once again, but it will at least be a little out of our comfort zones. But once again, just like high school, you'll grow comfortable with the surroundings, open up to new people and experiences, and want to embrace all of the amazing opportunities offered to you. And when you look back however many years later, you'll see just how much you've grown since that first day, kind of like you are right now. My point here is that, while well, yes, we are all going into something terrifying and different, we've done it before. And I mean, I think we turned out pretty all right. No matter how uncomfortable it may be at first, we have to remember that, just like high school, it'll be fine as time goes on. We'll meet those new people and make friends. We'll get to know the area we're in like the back of our hands. And we'll accomplish things we might not have imagined before. Sound familiar? Of course, I have to give a huge thank you to everyone who has been a part of my life and made all of this possible in these past four years. There have been so many amazing teachers and counselors who have been there to help me not only with academics, but with gaining the confidence to finally speak out in classes. Thanks to Mr. Cass for constantly pushing me to speak up even when I insisted on staying quiet. And to Mr. Kelly for giving me the ability to work with any situation, no matter how intimidating it might be. Like walking in late on the first day of welding to an entire class of sophomore boys. That was fun. To my loving and supporting friends and family, I'd like to thank you for believing in me through it all and helping me with the things that matter most every step of the way. I love you guys. And I'd like to give a huge thank you to Ms. Puglia for doing more than just helping me out with academics and the stress of college applications, but for being there when I just needed to talk or get advice on how to talk in front of crowds. I really appreciate everything she's done. Lastly, thank you to everyone in the class of 2017 for giving me some of my best and worst moments. From the great times I had with you all during homecoming, to being recognized as the worst female driver because I somehow managed to hit a boulder leaving this school. <laughs> At least it's not the way anymore, so you're welcome. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank everyone here for making the past four years something I'll never forget. We've been through a lot during our years in high school, and I think it's safe to say that I'm speaking for all of us on this. There were times like homecoming and prom that we all came together and had a good time, but of course it wasn't always like that. I'd be lying if I said these four years were easy for us, and unfortunately this isn't the end of the hard times. There will be plenty of those times throughout our lives, but we are so much more well equipped for it now. After seeing what life can throw at us, we've grown stronger and developed the ability to come together in times like those, when we need each other most. No matter what we may think about who we were coming into this experience, know that if we can handle the challenges we faced along the way back then, we can handle anything going forward. With that, I'd like to say thank you once again for allowing me the chance to speak tonight. I want you all to remember that you're capable of doing amazing things, and I wish you all the best of luck as you face these exciting new challenges in your lives. Now I'd like to invite teacher Evan Trzoski to the stage to introduce our second student speaker. Congratulations, class of 2017. Tonight is about your success and joy what you have earned and what you have achieved. Michael Giordano, not sure how to address you. You've been in the drama club for six years. Let me explain. He joined as a middle school student. Laudable, but unusual. He can sing which he's done in musicals and in the chorus. He can act in tragedies and in comedies. He can even dance. Actually, I'm not sure if he can dance. I've never seen it, and perhaps I'm lucky that I haven't. I don't know if that's something you can do. He was president of the drama club. He was also the school board rep for the student council, and he attended those long meetings with caring for his school. He addressed the entire student body this year in a class he took about the US election. My point is that not only is he talented, not only is he a leader, not only is he a good writer in class, yes, a good writer in class, but when you add it all up, you see one unique individual. 
And to make a more concrete point, I point to the fact that Michael ran for school board this year, a high school student at 18 years old. Imagine if any of us in this room could have done that at 18. And agree with him or not, and Michael doesn't always agree with me, evidenced by the amount of times he challenges me in class. But we promote critical thinking, so, so be it. Agree with his politics or not, you have to give him credit for making that run. What's more is the election this year took place in a blizzard. And Michael stood out for most of that day in the blizzard, holding up his campaign sign. That enduring, enduring image is a testament to his willpower and his character, to be sure. Well done, sir. I'm very proud of you. I've never run for public office, but Michael has. I've never been a lead character in play after play after play, but Michael has. I've been his teacher and his drama director. But at this point, what I've realized is that he's surpassed what I can give him in the classroom. So it is this time I need to let him go, to move forward into the world beyond, in all its terror and wonder. Let him forge his path, his path forward. And perhaps many of you parents and teachers today are feeling the same thing about letting these students go into the world as they've surpassed what we can give them. And in that, I hope my role as teacher and drama director has had a positive influence on him. It has been a privilege to be your teacher. And so now I think what I've decided to call you is friend. And so it is my great privilege to ask my friend to the stage, Michael Giordano. speech because next year I'll be attending Emmanuel College for Political Science, Education, and with a minor in Theater. All things that very uh, deeply Evan has impacted my life in. So thank you all for being here today. It is an absolute honor to be here speaking in front of all of you. This morning, as I was tying my shoes, I realized 12 years ago I still needed Miss Max help to do so. And now I'm standing in front of hundreds of people giving a speech. So. Progress. <clears throat> Tradition has it that a commencement, commencement speech typically contains words of wisdom, lessons learned, insights on how to be happy, and what really matters in life. That is, of course, if you believe the folks at graduationwisdom.com. What a huge responsibility to have. Frankly, I don't think it makes much sense to tell such a huge group of people how they can find what really matters in life when I'm just about to take the first independent steps of my own. So while I may not be able to solve world hunger or tell you all that, go get that new job, what I can offer you is some of the experience I've gained over the last 18 years. Now, according to some advice that I've received, I should have three main points that I want to convey and three stories that I can tell to express those points. So here goes. Point one. It is 100% okay not to know exactly what you're doing in life. I somehow found a way to be entering the rest of my life doing so many of the things that I love, but that's really because I've always attempted to stretch my goals as far as they could possibly go. For instance, as a six-year-old, I was going to be a superhero with, quote, every superpower ever. To be completely honest, that goal hasn't changed. In order to help me achieve that goal, my parents got me this huge art book. You remember this? Instantly, Super Michael came to life. Each of my best friends were given superpowers to fight crime alongside me, and my biggest foes consisted of an evil lion with a razor blade mane, and a woman with a wrecking ball attached to her head, appropriately dubbed King Lion and Wrecking Ball Girl. 
I may not have been capable of flying and shooting fire out of my eyes in reality, but my parents gave me the ability to start exploring who I wanted to be as early as they could. When I realized that being Super Michael wasn't a real attainable job, I had my mind dead set on being a writer and an artist. However, I do have to say, if Miss Ladd and Evan saw the stuff in this book, and how poorly it is written and drawn, they would go running. So, as you may have guessed, my aspirations changed as I grew older. When I was nine, I found acting. In eighth grade, I learned how to play guitar. As a, as a sophomore, I was 100% completely committed to being a teacher. And now I'm preparing to enter my freshman year of college as a dual major in political science and education with a minor in acting. However, any time that I was really passionate about any of those things, I put my all into it. Every single day, you can find Super Michael and his friends fighting crime inside the walls of my imagination. If you can figure out a way to be passionate about the things you care about, you won't need to know what you're doing. In fact, you'll probably already be doing it. Point two, be fearless. If there's one thing I've learned from all the things that I've wanted to do in my life, it's easily the fact that fear is just a distraction from achieving your goals. Except that you will, at some point, fail. Know that when you do fail, it will be so much easier to handle if you can look back on your experience and know that you put the most effort into it. For those of you who don't know me, and Evan already alluded to this, but one of the most eventful things that happened to me this past year was my campaign for school board. I gave that election my all. However, despite all my efforts to win, standing out in a blizzard and trying to pick up votes, attending every event possible, and brushing off the negativity that always comes when you put yourself in the public eye, right, Pete? It wasn't enough. My campaign didn't win. I had failed. But then a friend reminded me that you never give up. It wasn't an option. The result came out in favor of my opponent 916 votes to 910. Six votes. It would be easy to be frustrated that and bitter and upset and at times I was, but sometimes facing your fears can teach you more about yourself than you ever thought you could know. I can now say that I tried and I tried my best. The ballot said that I lost, but in my own way, I won that day. That campaign is and was just my beginning. And point three. Keep going. In theater, we have to master our improv skills just as much as our ability to act, because you never know when you might need them. There's a reason every live production is unique, and it's largely a part of the fact that we are so, so prone to making mistakes. For example, let me take you back to the summer of 2009. My first lead role ever was Charlie Bucket in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I'm sure most of you know the general story of Willy Wonka, and if you do, you know that there's a scene where Charlie Bucket is walking home and he finds his dad sitting down on a bench, visibly upset. Charlie's father tells him that he's just been fired from his job, and just around the same time, Charlie opens up his Willy Wonka chocolate bar and finds hidden inside his golden ticket to go visit Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. This prompts Charlie and his father to sing a song together about the power of thinking positively in their brand new golden ticket. Now, a week out from the show, the two people who were originally cast as Charlie's parents dropped out. Don't ever do that. We had nobody to replace them. The director started scrambling for two people to play Charlie's parents when suddenly he gets an idea, which, if you have ever been involved in theater, you should know that directing, directors getting ideas in the last week can be one of the most terrifying things to experience. Yeah. He looks to my real parents and asks if they would be willing to play the role. After realizing that they really had no choice, my mother and father managed to learn all of their lines and music within that week. So, it's showtime. Opening night of Willy Wonka. We cruise through the show just fine until we start singing Think Positive. About a minute into the song, without any explanation, the music stops. I look at my father who has had this script for a week. And we wait. About 10 seconds go by when we realize the music is not coming back on. So he looks at me, smiles like he is right now, and he stomps his feet four times. And we keep going. 
We finish the song with no music at all. My grandmother, sitting in the front row, apparently never even realized the music was gone in the first place. <laughs> that was the first time I ever had to improvise on stage, and it most certainly wasn't my last. If you've seen Alex and I on stage, we know that. Sometimes in life, your music turns off. You just have to keep plowing through, with or without that song, because you'll always have someone beside you. There are a few people I want to thank before I finish my speech. My friends, my teachers, the school board, my parents, and my sister. You've all inspired me in ways that you don't even know, and you deserve so much more than a sentence in a speech. And of course, the class of 2017. On our first day as freshmen, we rang that bell just like we did today, and went to the auditorium where we met our administration for the first time. And what a lovely team you have been over the last four years. Now, Mr. Staff, you told us something that day that stuck with me for the rest of my high school experience. He said, Class of 2017, the next four years will fly by faster than you can imagine, so make the most out of it. Little did he know what he was in for. Four years later, I think that Mr. Stack may have regretted telling us that, because we certainly have made the most of it. When we turn this tassel tonight and throw our caps in the air, know that we deserve it. And I hope you all walk through the rest of your life knowing that you can make the most out of this small town education. An early morning back in September, I remember waking up and thinking, this is it, this is the end, my senior year. Now, today, reflecting on that sunny September day, I know one thing above all. This last year of college essays, applications, and senior festivities was not the end. This has been the beginning of our future. In class of 2017, we made it. So caps off to you. Thank you all for making me proud to call myself one of your classmates. Today I challenge all of us to become champions of the future, together. When I depart with you tonight, you may not always remember who I am, but I hope you remember these three things. You don't need to know what you're doing. When you feel like that might not be true, just keep in mind that as a seven-year-old, I wrote myself a superhero theme song, and I will not sing it today. Don't give up. Never fear failure. One of these days, you just might get those six votes. And finally, when your music comes to an abrupt silence, always keep singing. Congratulations, class of 2017. And remember to vote for me in 2036. invite graduates in the band and the choir to come forward and join their music groups. The next part of our program is going to be run by Mr. Matthew Brad, our band director, and Sanborn Regional High School 2013 graduate, recent graduate of Berkeley College of Music, filling in as our choir director this evening, Rachel Alex.
things will pick up very quickly. Someday in the way distant future when you're 42, you will feel like, think like this just happened the other day. As a matter of fact, today you might feel this. I graduated high school exactly 25 years ago today, June 16, 1992. And it's been a whirlwind ever since. Tonight, it's my privilege to introduce A.J. Woodhouse. A.J. has been a dedicated and loyal member of the San Juan community. He has been very active in several school activities, including as your class president. No easy feat, by the way. Class president is often a thankless job that comes with stresses few high school students seek. Despite these challenges, A.J. has been a perfect fit for this role. He's friendly and sociable with all students. And in the end, succeeded in bringing a class with many divisions together. Tonight is evidence of this. I personally have enjoyed working with A.J. over the last two years in AP history classes and AP government classes. Um, his sense of humor in the class and his personality was always appreciated. I look forward to hearing about his achievements as he moves on to the engineering program at UNH next year. Finally, for the final time as your class president, please welcome Mr. A.J. Woodhouse. Good afternoon, family, friends, and fellow graduates. Thank you for joining us today in the celebration of our graduation. Twelve years ago, when I started first grade, it seemed as though we'd never get here. I wasn't exactly sure what graduation was, to be completely honest. All I thought about in elementary school was what I could trade again an eraser, how terrifying quicksand was. First memory I have of elementary school is walking to class, my mom right behind me, uh, I have my own sharpened pencil in my hand, and out of nowhere, this brand new kid named Dana Wright ran up to me, grabbed the pencil, and ran away. <laughs> I got so scared. I mean, I didn't know who this was. He decided to take my pencil and leave. A few seconds though, a few seconds later though, Dana ran back, had my sharpened pencil in his hand, and a new pencil sharpener, and gave them both to me. That's when I realized I was going to like elementary school. Once we reached middle school, uh, we realized that we'd be merging with another school, bring on a new kind of peer in our lives. What kind of kids would be in our school? Will they be mean to us? How many of them will shove me into a locker? This was a genuine concern of mine, considering, for those of you who might remember, I was three and a half feet tall. <laughs> However, when we moved to middle school, we realized there is no reason to be afraid. These new students were just like us. They were all just as nice as the kids from New England, and no, we cannot get in the lockers. Well, most of us couldn't. <laughs> Throughout middle school, the kids from New England Kingston grew close. We're all friends, and everything seemed perfect. And so we started to prepare for high school. Now for me, the thought of high school was terrifying. Because for those of you who remember, I was still three and a half feet tall. <laughs> Not seems I was going to grow anytime soon. We were all these not so friendly giants that walked the halls in the high school. And not only that, we were going to be merging with another town, Fremont. I heard much about these free monsters, but I was still scared of running this huge school. All this struck so much fear in me. Who were these free monsters? Why do you have to go to school with them? How many seniors are going to shove me in the lockers? Of course, once we reach high school, we realize there's absolutely nothing to be worried about. I made so many friends with Fremont, I don't know what to do without them. I share these stories to draw a map. A map of all the times we've been faced with an area of uncertainty. But the lives we each grew accustomed to are about to change. Throughout our journey here at Sanborn, we have dealt with constant change. It has been preparing us for what will come next. Going off each of your own adventures, everyone lies about to be faced with the biggest change you may have ever experienced. But I want you to remember, the past 12 years has been constant practice for us, adapting to new environments, making new friends, and finally, hitting my growth spurt. <laughs> we have all finally reached a point where we'll take on the new tactical 
chapter of our lives. And for many, facing this change may seem like an impossible challenge. Don't see it as a challenge. See it as an opportunity. An opportunity to use everything you've learned here at Sanborn to take you further in your life. An opportunity to explore different parts of the world where you never knew existed. An opportunity to discover who you are and what you want for your future. And an opportunity to make that a reality. Many people talk poorly about generation saying that technology has hindered our ability to be successful in the real world. I disagree. I believe we are on the luckiest generation to grow up in a time where innovation and curiosity surrounds our lives. We are experiencing constant change even with technology and has helped us strengthen our ability to adapt. Strengthen our ability to think for ourselves and strengthen our ability to come together to achieve great things. Sam Bernard has given each and every one of us the building blocks to move our life in any direction we decide. And now, we have the ability to accept this change as an opportunity to decide what direction that is. I am so proud to be part of Sanborn Region Class of 17, and as should you. I want to thank you all for allowing me to be part of your Sanborn story as a class president. I couldn't be more proud to serve such, serve such an amazing class. Congratulations, Class of 2017. Our next speaker will be addressing the Sanborn community for the final time, and to introduce him, I'd like a welcome to the stage, student Lindsay Giordano. today. From Reverend Shea last night talking about making your days count instead of counting the days. And Koran this morning talking about how each of you, her classmates, need to be the change that we need to see in the world. While you were busy studying math and literature, history and science over the years, we not only taught you the subject matter, but perhaps more importantly, taught you how to learn, how to think. Perhaps these are the most important things that you'll leave here with. Hopefully we've taught you how to think critically, analyze information, and draw your own conclusions. You've been provided the foundation and the tools to build your own future. Now it's up to each of you to put those skills to use. The wide variety of courses that we're currently able to offer have made you well suited for the future ahead. This world is changing fast. 
Many of the college majors today didn't even exist 10 years ago. The United States Department of Labor estimates that today's learners will change jobs between 10 and 14 times by the time they're 40. The top 10 jobs in demand today weren't even in existence in 2007. We're currently educating students for careers that will use technology that hasn't been invented yet to solve problems that we don't even know that we have yet. Think about that. Sanborn's provided you most of the tools to be successful. What you do with those tools will determine your level of success and happiness. The key to success and happiness, though, lies within each of you. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, those tools what will determine us your level of success and happiness. The key to success and happiness, though, lies within each of you. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. All of us are defined. Your character, who are you? What type of a person do you want to become? We're all still works in progress, every one of us. When you leave here today, it'll be easy for you to shed whatever stereotypes have been cast on you. You can become anyone and do anything you want, anything that you set your mind to. Character means the particular combination of qualities that make someone a particular kind of person. Our character is what we do when we think no one's looking. Character is like a tree. The reputation is like its shadow. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree is the real thing. Helen Keller, a woman of great insight, wrote, Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience and trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Remain true to your moral and ethical compass. Do the right thing, even when it's difficult. Not for personal gain or for your own agenda, but for the greater good of all. Too many people today have their own agendas or the agendas of special interest groups that goes against the greater good. Or for your own agenda, but for the greater good of all. Too many people today have their own agendas or the agendas of special interest groups that goes against the greater good. Don't get caught up in someone else's rhetoric. Abraham, live by our principles no matter what others say. And especially, don't lose heart if we fail to get what we set out to do. Living by your principles and maintaining your character and integrity are not always easy. Sometimes, you have to walk away from the situation. At times, it's far better to walk away than deal with constant attacks on your character or your integrity. Be true to yourself. We've done our work. The rest is up to you. Your character, honesty, integrity, and dignity will define your future. Within you are all its tools. Now here's my challenge to you. Go out and make a difference. Live your passions and change the world. Make Within you place. are all of the tools. To about now here's my challenge to you. Go out and, and make a difference. Live your passions and change the world. Best wishes as you make, make it a better place.
years, so many of you students uh, have had her as your, as your principal. Uh, the other person is Miss Ellen Hume Howard, our curriculum director. She's not able to be here with us this evening, but she's retiring after 33 years of service in the district. So. Oh, really? 
Victoria Alvarado. Morgan Bayon. Haley Vassalier. Sarah Bebo. Jalissa Bolton. Logan Bonjour. Michael Botello. Victoria Boucher. Catherine Boyd. Samantha Breuer. Renee Buccio. Ashley Buchanan. Kendall Burke.
Alexis DeRoche. Nicholas DeArmin. Riley Dion. Molly Decola. Liam Dolan. Shania Donahue. Connor Donaghan. Ronnie Doobie. Jake Ducharme. James Duval. Kayla Easter. Cade Emerson. Kyle Erickson. William Ernest. Madison Fairchild.
Jordan. Kendra Goucher. Victoria Guillamino. John Hardy. Brianna Hartford. Jordan Harvey. Austin Hatch. Molly Hayes. Derek Hines. Hunter Jenkins. Scott Jenkins. Cody Jolliker. Austin Judd. Jason Kelleher.
Nicholas Merrick. April Miller <laughs> Alyssa Millette <laughs> Hannah Myron Alana Montgomery. Bo Murphy. Troy Fulch. Laurel Willens. <laughs> Caitlin Paycheck. <laughs> Rumit Patel. Nicole Pelletier Elijah Pitkin
Jonathan Sidman. Thank you. 
invested in me by the State of New Hampshire and the Sanborn Regional School Board, I hereby confer these diplomas to the class of 2017. Please move your tassels from right to left. to you the Sanborn Regional High School Class of 2017.